The road to the TurboGrafx Mini has been a rough one. It got delayed from its original release date and has staggered out of the gate, trickling down to the masses who awaited it with bated breath. I finally received my order recently, and in this episode, we are going to take a look at the system itself, its interface, its games, as well as the emulation quality. I've got a lot to cover in this one, so let's get started. The Mini itself is meant to be a smaller replica of the original 1989 TurboGrafx-16. They did a hell of a nice job on the hardware here. The black plastic, accents, and logo all look really nice and convey that cool TG-16 aesthetic you know and love. They even made it so the back panel pulls away like the original, revealing your video and power plugs. It's bigger than you'd expect, much bigger than the previous machines from Sega and Nintendo. Hell, it's even larger than the original PC Engine from Japan. Perhaps the most important part of any Mini's hardware is the controller. And man, did they hit a grand slam in that department. This is the TurboGrafx-16's controller, pure and simple. It feels the same, it functions the same, and the quality really impressed me. It comes complete with turbo switches as well, one of the few systems to do so straight out of the box. The system itself has a replica card slot that of course is non-functional, as well as two USB ports for two players. Some games on the system support more, but if you want to play those you'll need the TurboTap that's sold separately. For those wondering, there are regional variants available for this under the PC Engine and Core Graphics branding. It may be of some interest to those of you wanting wireless options as well. 8-Bit Doe is doing a controller for this that is branded according to region. And finally, if you find that the controller isn't working properly, the top USB port is actually for controller number one. The interface to these mini systems are often pretty straightforward, and aside from some nice box art, don't really offer much in the bells and whistles department. Here the Turbo Mini again nails such an incredible amount of nostalgia pack goodness, you can't help but feel good just navigating and using it. When loading a Hue card title, you get a nice animation of the card clicking into the system. To add a nice authenticity to the presentation, Super Graphics games even load upside down just like the original hardware. When loading a CD game, the interface actually breaks out both the system card the game used as well as the CD-ROM attachment itself. And if that wasn't cool enough, it does this differently for the region the game supports. Load a Japanese CD-ROM game and the Japanese CD attachment is used for the animation. These touches add a really nice visual flair for those of us familiar with the original hardware. The settings are pretty standard from there. You have a choice of screen size, wallpaper, language, and a few other things to fool around with. You can also access the front end while playing a game by hitting the select and run buttons together. In this menu, you can also save and load states up to a total of four. The library for the unit is split between two regions. The North American section includes box art, card labels, and English versions from the genuine TurboGrafx releases, while the Japanese section includes the same for its PC Engine titles. Switching between the two produces a cool TV turning off effect that again, adds to the great presentation. I'm pretty happy with the attention to detail here. Whether you're new to these games or a diehard fan, there is definitely enough to appreciate for everyone. When it comes to the games, the Mini is both a great success and a head-scratching disappointment. There are a ton of classics here, adding up to over 50 games in total. You get staples like Bonk's Adventure, Blazing Lasers, East Book 1 and 2, Splatterhouse and Ninja Spirit on the Turbo, as well as Dracula X, Daimakai Mora, Ninja Gaiden, Sapphire and Salamander for the PC Engine. There is absolutely no shortage of great games here. There are a fair amount of shoot-em-ups to be sure, 
but it's counterbalanced with platformer, strategy, and RPG games for those of you that prefer things a bit slower and less lethal. The only problem I really have here is that Konami decided that it would include doubles of a handful of titles between the Turbo and PC Engine. Military Madness and Eastbook 1 and 2 have both regions available for some odd reason. As if that wasn't curious enough, they even dropped Japanese language versions of games like Snatcher, which are virtually unplayable to non-Japanese speaking people. Konami owns a vast array of properties itself, and even owns the stuff Hudson Soft had, meaning there was no shortage whatsoever of great games they could have put on this machine. I mean, they could have also thrown us a bone here and included one of the system's excellent Neo Geo ports, and the lack of legendary acts saddens me to no end. The venerable M2 was in charge of the software that runs the TurboGrafx Mini, and I must say, they once again do a fine job. Like most low-end chips that run these devices, the hardcore among you will notice some input lag in its various games, as well as some variation in sound. The severity does depend on the game. Some of you will feel and hear it instantly, others will take a little longer, and a few of you will find it damn near perfect. The vast majority, I think, won't feel or hear anything and walk away from the device happy with the experience. Most of the games included have the slowdown and sprite flicker of the original hardware exactly where it should be, and the majority of those do not have any crippling disparities in sound and visuals from there. Like the mini systems from Nintendo and Sega, this does not have the same high-level emulation of high-powered run-ahead software available on the PC or the stuff available via FPGA. If you are the type to sit in forums for hours on end complaining about input lag, sound lag, or how much better your PC runs emulation, you know what to expect from this box. For the rest of you, it does a competent job that most of you will find quite playable. Of all the mini systems that have seen release these last few years, this is now my favorite. The care given to the front end was greatly appreciated, the game library includes some of my favorites for the platform, and that controller nails the feel of using the real thing. There are even a few enhanced ports hidden in there that you can access by experimenting with the select button when you choose a game. Konami has mostly done the Turbo Proud here, not just in the selection and variety of software, but also the build quality and the nice touches in the software. A word of warning to those interested, while it does come with a USB cable, it does not come with a power block. These are sold separately for the branded option, but any USB block will work that supports 5 volts at 2 amps. These mini releases are never going to be one-to-one -one replacements for original hardware. Try as they might to give us a decent product, low-end emulation will always have its drawback for the purist to gleefully point out to its target audience. But the truth is pretty simple. If you want an official product that's cheap, easy to use, and widely available, you cannot do much better than this. Among the platform's original releases, there are single games that will cost you way more than this product. For $99, Konami is selling you nostalgia in a box, and the end product is well worth the investment for old and new fans alike. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.